Okay, hi everyone. My name is Luz Badillo and I'm a librarian here at SMC Library. Um, welcome to today's workshop, which is going to be level up at your library, and we're going to be covering the research process. So before we begin, I do want to ask you all to mute yourselves. You were already muted, so thank you for doing that. Um, please remain muted for the entirety of the workshop just to avoid any um, crossover of voices and so we can sail smoothly through the workshop. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to use the chat. Um, I can look at them periodically, but I am the only one doing the workshop, so it'll get a little bit tricky, but I will answer your questions as they come up, and if I don't, I will answer them at the end of the workshop. Um, and again, there will be a uh, answering questions portion at the very end of the workshop after I stop the recording. Okay, so for today's goals, I really want to help you all identify popular library services and resources available to you, just so you know what the library has to offer to you, um, since it is a very uh, nice resource to use while you're on campus and off campus too. So we'll go into that. I'll also familiarize yourself with the library website. So the library website can be a little bit confusing at first, but once you start using it and get a hang of it, it could be a really awesome tool for you to use while you're here at SMC. And lastly, I'm going to hopefully have you all effectively use OneSearch and Academic Search Complete, which is one of our databases here that we have access to through the library to locate resources. And this will come in handy, especially when you're working on your assignments to look for resources uh, through the library. So before I get started, does anyone have any questions in general about the library? Feel free to pop them into the chat now, just to make sure that I incorporate them throughout the workshop session. Nope, okay. So to start off, these are some of our popular library resources that a lot of our students uh, are really into. So we have printing and copying here at the library. Currently, it is free. Um, so you can head into the, com into the computer section in our library to print anything that you might want to be interested in printing. We also have copy machines located by the reference desk that you can use to make copies of books or anything else that you may need copies of. We also have our course reserves, which are primarily textbooks. Uh, and these are textbooks that are put on reserve by instructors primarily. Uh, and you can check them out for two hours at a time. And they do stay in the library. Um, for example, if you need the textbook for longer than two hours, if nobody else is waiting for that textbook, you can go ahead and check it out again and keep it for an additional two hours. We also have study rooms, so you can book a group study room for up to four hours per day, and you can book them a week in advance. So later on in the workshop, I will go into the library website and show you how to do that if you haven't done it already. And lastly, I would say that the Ask a Librarian 24-7 live chat feature on our library website is very popular. Uh, and super handy. So I will point that out later on as well when we are on the library website so that you know where you can go ask for assistance at any time of the day from a librarian. Okay, so now we're going to head into our library website. So this is our library website. Hopefully you've already seen it before. Um, but this is going to be the main landing page that you'll see when you head over to the library website. So for right now, we're going to go into the main center portion of the library website and explore the resources there and how you can best use them um, to your benefit. So right off the bat, we see our OneSearch search bar. And this you can use to search for, as it says, books, articles, journals, and videos. So essentially anything that we have access to here in the library. I'm going to go into OneSearch later on in this workshop into a little bit more depth. Um, but for now, we're going to go to the resources that are located right underneath. 
So to start off, we have the first rectangle that says my library account. So this rectangle you can use to log into your library account and see any books that you may have on loan. Um, the searching that you have done in the past in OneSearch, if you decide to save that um, and anything like that. Secondly, we have our databases rectangle here. And this rectangle is gonna take you to the databases that we have access to here in the library. So we can see here that we have our popular databases listed on the left-hand side. Our new trial, new or trial databases listed as well. And then we also have our 52 databases listed in alphabetical order from A to Z. So you can select the letter of the database that you may be looking for, or you can use the filters right at the top to filter to a set of databases that you may be interested in. So the first filter that you can use is the all subjects. So we are still continuously building this list up, um, but you can see that some of our databases have been listed under subjects. And this is going to make it easier for you when you're looking for uh, databases to search in when you have a primary, a particular topic in mind. I'm gonna click on theater arts. So you can see that we have seven databases listed here. It's going to give you a best bet, which is gonna be the databases that are popular within this subject. And then the other databases from that list compiled here for you to access. We also have another filter up at the top, which is the database types. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the first filter and then go to the second one. And you can see that we have our databases sectioned off based on what type of resource they offer. So we have eBooks, encyclopedias and dictionaries, images and photography, newspapers, scholarly or peer reviewed articles and videos and film. So again, this is gonna help narrow down the results from the 52 databases that we do have, and you can see that now it's gonna show the six that we have access to for videos and films. Okay, back to the library website. Ooh. Next up is gonna be our research guides. So our research guides, I like to refer to them as almost folders of information. So you can see that we have three. We have the general purpose, subject guide, and topic guide. For general purpose, you can see we have four li libguides listed here. I'm gonna go into introduction to research so you can see what this looks like. Um, and essentially here, you can find information compiled about the subject that the LibGuide is covering. For this one, Introduction to Research, it's gonna cover a lot of what we cover today. So if you ever forget anything that we go over today, this is a great LibGuide to go back to um, and remind yourself of the things that you learned today or get additional assistance while you're working on things like your assignments. So you can see we have different tabs on the left-hand side, including citation styles, APA and MLA, and other videos, and workshops that may be of assistance to you. Now, if I go back, we also have our subject guides. So we have libguides covering a variety of subjects here offered at SMC. I'm gonna click on English and literature. So you can see again, it has a variety of information available to you and you can see on the tabs located on the left-hand side, the different topics or uh, resources that are available. And these are always gonna be catered to the subject that it's covering. So I always recommend checking out the one that's more closely related to either the assignment you're working on or the class that you're taking so that you can see the resources that are listed available to you. And then our third one is gonna be our topic guide. So these are gonna to cover topics that may not necessarily be related to a specific course, um, but that a topic that is of discussion. So you can see we have a variety of topics here. I'm gonna to click on the Black History Month 2023. 
So this libguide was created for the month of Black History Month, and it's going to be packed with different information and resources related to Black History Month, as well as the book display that you may find in the main lobby when you walk into the library. And you can see that we have the books that were in that book display listed here. Okay, so that's research guides. We also have our workshops and videos that you can find listed on the library website as well. So you are attending one, which is the one we're currently in right now. Um, and you can find all of our workshops for the spring semester listed here. You can see that we have two dates listed under every workshop. So each workshop is offered in person and online. So last week, this workshop was offered in person in the library, and now we're offering it via Zoom. So we're always going to have the two modalities available to you all to view. And the Zoom versions of these workshops are recorded. So once this workshop is complete, it's going to be uploaded to our YouTube channel where you can go watch again and again as you see fitting. In the center, you're going to find our Ask a Librarian feature. And I mentioned previously in the PowerPoint, this is going to be where you can ask a librarian for assistance. For some reason, the box is not loading. So let me refresh it. Oh, that's great. It's loading. So the Ask a Question chat box is going to be available to you all. 24 seven. So this live chat is going to allow you to ask a librarian a question at any time of the day. So if you are asking your question within library operating hours, a librarian from the SMC library will answer your question. If you are asking a question after the library is closed, a librarian from another institution from our consortium, um, which we worked in partnership to answer each other's question, uh, out of operating hours will answer your question. If they are unable to assist you because it is SMC related, they will let us know and we will get back to you as soon as we can to answer your question. That chat feature is also available on the library website itself. So you can see it's here popping out, ask us on the right hand side. So if forever, any reason one isn't loading and it looks like this one isn't loading either, um, you can try either one. And then lastly, we have a book, a study room. So this is gonna be where you can book a group study room for you to use in the library. So you can book a group study room for four hours per day and you can book it a week in advance. I highly recommend that you do book it as soon as you know that you want to use a group study room because they are very popular in the library. You can see for today that the group study rooms are primarily booked until around 7 p.m. So the red squares indicate that the group study room has been reserved and the green indicates that it is available for reservation. Once you do reserve a group study room, all you have to do is take that information with you to the circulation desk, which is the desk that appears immediately on your left-hand side when you enter the library, and they will let you um, know how to get to the group study room and give you the key to unlock that room. Okay, does anyone have any questions so far? I'm gonna wait a minute or so if you do, and you can pop it in the chat. All right, all good. Okay, no questions. Moving on. Okay, so again, on the library website, we scroll down a little bit further, you can find our hours. So the library is open for the spring semester, Monday through Thursday from 8 to 8 p.m. 
and Friday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. We are closed on the weekends, and any day that we may be closed within the spring semester, you can find listed here. So you can see we were previously closed for Flex Day on March 3rd, and we will be closed this upcoming March 16th for another Flex Day. If we scroll further down, you can find our quick links of resources. So our YouTube channel is actually linked here. Uh, the Ask a Librarian feature is also listed here. So this is the third way that you can get to the Ask Us chat feature if for one, re for one reason or another, uh, the other two aren't loading. Um, you can also find the group study room link listed here, tech resources for students. So if you're having trouble with Wi-Fi or you're having difficulties getting into your Corsair, this is where you will find that information. Um, we also have an orientation request form. This is for faculty, so your professors, um, to get a hold of the librarian, so you, you don't have to pay any attention to that. And then also we have our graphic novel book club linked here. So the library does have a graphic novel book club, so if you're interested in that, feel free to check that out. We also have our location and contact information, so you can find the library phone number here if you ever want to give us a call if you have any quick questions. And then our social media is also linked down here below. Um, highly recommend following us since you will find library updates and any events that we may be holding in the library um, advertised there on our social media accounts. All right, let's scroll back up. Okay, so let me go back to the PowerPoint. So now we're gonna be talking about the research process. Uh, doing research can be um, tricky, it can be frustrating, um, it, it, it can be not a good time if, if you're going into it, especially in the very last minute. So one thing that I try to recommend to all my students is to create keywords before you're jumping into the library website to look for resources. So that's where we're gonna start off first. So you can see here um, sort of my method of creating keywords. So first you wanna identify your topic or research question. So this can be literally a sentence of what you may be interested in searching for. Um, that topic or research question may change as you're going through your research, but always try to identify what it is that you are interested in looking for before you're going into the library website to search for resources. This is going to make it a little bit easier for you to identify your interests and also the keywords that you want to play around with when you're looking for resources. So for this presentation or workshop, I have put together a topic or research question of my own, and it is how does social media influence the communication of today's college students? You can see that I've highlighted and underlined the main keywords in this question. So these are gonna be my immediate four keywords that I would play around with on the library website to look for resources. You always want to think of other keywords that may replace your main ones, just so you have a variety of words to play with. So you can see underneath, I've broken down those four main keywords and thought of maybe synonyms, um, words that are a little bit more specific. So you can see that under social media, I have listed Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, since they are all social media uh, platforms. Under influence, I have impact and effect. For communication, I have interpersonal skills, talking skills, speaking skills, speaking and talking. And under college students, I've gotten a little bit more specific and I have university students, junior college students, first year students, and transfer students. So you can see that from the four main keywords that I've pulled for my main research question, I now have at least 10 other keywords that I can use to search for resources. Does anyone have any questions about that?
Nope. Okay. So we are going to go back to the library website and actually start searching in OneSearch. Thank you for letting me know that all is good. <laughs> okay, moving on. So again, we have our OneSearch bar here. I'm gonna go ahead and type in two of the keywords that we have established. So I believe it was social media and college students. So you can see I typed in my two keywords. I have 39,000 results. That is a lot of results to go through, uh, especially if we're just looking for a handful that we want to use for an assignment, right? So we have a variety of ways we can narrow this down. Before I do so, I'm going to scroll through what we already have. You can see we have articles, Coming up in our results, we have some books. More articles. And the list goes on. I do want to focus on the articles and books that have appeared here just to show you um, some neat things about it that'll make your life a little bit easier. So. You can see that the first article says that it's a peer reviewed. We see the purple icon here. So anytime that you see an article listed in our results that is peer reviewed, it's going to have that purple icon for the most part. A peer reviewed article is a publication or also referred to as a scholarly publication. And it refers to articles that have been reviewed by others considered experts or professionals in the field. So oftentimes for assignments, your professors will ask for you to use peer reviewed or scholarly articles. These are gonna be it. So look for that purple icon that appears in OneSearch that indicates to you whether or not it is peer reviewed. For books, you can see that the first one is letting us know that it's available at the main stacks. So this means that this book is gonna be located physically in the library, in our library book stacks. You can see we have the call number here. So this is gonna be sort of like the address of the book that's gonna appear on the spine of the book that you're gonna be looking for when you're locating the book. It's also indicating to us that it's available online. So you can view this book online since it is, or it does have an ebook version of it. You can see number five has this little purple guy with the word course. This indicates to us that it's a course reserve. So this is a book that is being used uh, for class, for a class. We can see that it says main reserves here and then also has a call number listed next to it. So our course reserves are located behind the circulation desk. So if you are interested in using a course reserve, make sure you write down the call number of the book and take that with you when you go ask for it at the circulation desk. Let's see. So now let's go through the filters that appear on the left-hand side of OneSearch. These are gonna come in handy if we wanna break down that 39,000 results and make it a little bit more manageable to go through the results. So you can see under availability, we have available online, peer reviewed journals, open access and held by the library. So here you can see we have another option for selecting peer reviewed or scholarly articles. So I'm gonna apply that filter. And you can see it's brought down our results a little bit. So now we have 22,000 results. All of the articles that appear in the center should have that peer reviewed purple icon, which I'm seeing. And now we're good to go if this is the type of article that we're looking for. We also have other filters that you can use to break down the results. I'm gonna recommend using the publication date filter. 
So this is going to come in handy if you're looking for research that's a little bit more up to date or relevant. So I'm going to change the date to 2020 to 2023. And now we have 7,000 results. So all of these results should be peer reviewed, which I'm seeing the purple icon for, and they should also be published within the year 2020 to 2023. Does anyone have any questions so far? Nope. Thank you for your chat response. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and actually click on the first article that appears here. I see it has our keyword social media in it. And I just want to point to you the different tools that appear in OneSearch that you can use to your advantage. So here we have this article. It's indicating to us that its full text is available online for us to read through two different databases, EBSCOhost Academic Search Complete, which we will go into a little bit later, and then EBSCOhost Psychology and Behavioral Sciences Collection. So you can access the article from either one of these databases and it should load the article up for you. We also have these four functions that appear in the center. So you can print. You can create a citation, which I think is the more popularly used tool from OneSearch. So you can see here that you can generate a citation for this article in a variety of citation styles. All you have to do is select the citation style that you are using, copy the citation to the clipboard. So it's just going to copy it and then you're going to paste it directly into your document. I highly, highly recommend that you double check the citation since it is auto-generated. Um, it, it, it doesn't mean that it's 100% correct. So always double check to make sure that all of the elements for the citation style that you're using is incorporated in the citation. We also have a permalink option here. So this is actually gonna be the link or the URL that you want to save if you want to come back to this record. Um, and PERMA link just indicates permanent link. So this link is gonna be the reliable one for you to count on if this is your way of getting back to resources that you find in the library. The URL at the top, that tends to be the one that people will save for later, um, can change depending on if that website's been updated or something's been removed. Um, that URL can change, so always stick to the permalink if there is one available. There's also the email function, so you can email an article that you might think is interesting when you're doing some searching in OneSearch, and you can email it to yourself. This way you have sort of a compilation of different articles that you're interested in using and you can refer back to them later to then see which one it is that you do want to use. And I believe I am signed into my library account so I want to show you some cool features that you can use when you're signed in. So you can see up at the top there's this pin. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. The pin also appears here in the results. Anytime you click that pin, it's going to take that article or book or whatever it is that you've pinned to your favorites. If you go ahead and click on that, it'll show you all of the different items that you may have pinned in the past from OneSearch. So this is also a great way to keep track of resources that you may be interested in using. Um, and that way you don't have to write anything down or save a permalink or anything like that. All you have to do is make sure that you're signed into your library account. Okay. Any questions so far?
Oh, good. Okay. Thank you for being so responsive in the chat. All right. So let's go to the library homepage again. This time we're going to go back to our databases. And for today, we're going to focus on Academic Search Complete, which is one of the popular databases used here at the library. So Academic Search Complete is a really good place to start. It is a multidisciplinary database, which means that it's going to cover a variety of subjects. And that's why I always recommend it as one of the starting points for students to start searching for resources if they're going to go into a database. So similarly to OneSearch, you can see we have our searching fields here. So I believe I used social media and college students. And before I hit search, I want to bring your attention to the Boolean operators that appear here. Um, that's what they're called. So we have three options. We have the AND, which is the standard one when you want to include both keywords in your search. We have OR. This you can use when you want to use two word keywords interchangeably. And then we have NOT. NOT can be used if you're doing some searching and you're seeing a lot of articles come up about a particular subject that you're really not interested in, but seems to be correlated with your topic, you can go ahead and select not for that and enter the keywords that are appearing that you don't want to appear. So for this search, we're going to stick to and. And you can see here we have a thousand results, which is a little bit, not a little bit, a lot more um, precise compared to one search. We can see on the left-hand side, we have filters that we can use to break down the results. And then in the center, we're going to have the articles or resources that may be available to us. So again, here we have the peer-reviewed filter available. So I'm going to select that. It took our results down to 800 results. We also have the publication date filtered here, similarly to OneSearch. So I'm going to change that to 2020 to see what we get. Now we have 300 results. And then we have some other filters that you may or may not want to use while you're searching. Um, two fun ones that I like to point out is the language and geography. So sometimes we have research here in a variety of languages. You can select which languages you want to view your results in. We also have the geography uh, filter, which will allow you to pinpoint where you want that research to be um, taking place in. So you can see we have a variety of locations here to choose from. I'm not gonna select any for now, but I just wanted to point those out. So in the center, we can see we have our results. PDF full text is indicating to us that we have access to this article. So I'm actually gonna select the first one. Again, we have that PDF full text option here. If I select it, it should open up that article. And here it is. So as long as you are signed in, to your library account or to your Coursera, the library will identify you as being an SMC student and it should give you immediate access to the resources you are looking at. So here we have that article. On the right-hand side, we have tools that you can use as well to save um, whatever resource it is you're looking at in the database. Very similar to OneSearch, we have an email function here. So you could go ahead and type in your email here and send the article over to yourself. But before you do that, this is where you're going to create the citation if you do need it or are interested in it. And that's gonna appear on the right-hand side. So here under citation format, you have a variety of citation styles to choose from. So go ahead and select that citation style 
before you send an article to yourself via email so that it is included in the email. We also have this little paper tool here, which will again also create a citation format. So this is just going to be if you're interested in the citation, but not necessarily interested in, in emailing the article to yourself. We also have the permalink option listed here as well. And you can see that it appears right here at the top for you all to use if that's something you're interested in. I'm going back and selecting the title because I do want to show you some information that's listed here in the center. So we have the title of the article. We have the authors who worked on the article, the source, so we can see um, where that article was published in. And then we can see some subject terms and author supplied keywords here. So this is another great way of gathering keywords for you to search for in the databases or in OneSearch. So you can see we have social media and college students bolded since it is, they are the keywords that I selected initially, but we have these other keywords listed here that are related to this article that may or may not be of interest. So if I were interested in how social media affects college students in the sense of exposing them to tobacco, for instance, since this is the article I selected, then you can see that we have these other keywords that we could use to gather other articles about the similar topic. Any questions so far? Alrighty, no questions. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the library website very briefly. And to our research guides. And I just want to point to our citation style guide, but also our introduction to research guide again. And I want to highlight the citation style tabs that appear here. Just to remind you that we do have information to assist you with the creation of your citation. And I'm going to select MLA. You can see here we have the MLA handbook listed. We have additional online resources that may be of interest to you. A lot of students like to use OWL Purdue, and that's listed here in the third bullet point. We also have MLA video tutorials here to help you with your citations. And then my favorite tab of them all is the sample citations. So this is going to be where you can see the MLA quick reference sheet. And you can see it has examples of how to create in-text citations, as well as the complete citation that will appear in your Works Cited or Bibliography page. So it's all broken down. This one is highlighted and, and everything, so it's great. So I highly recommend checking out the citation tabs of this research guide if you are in assistance, in need of assistance to create your citations. If I scroll down further, you can see it explains how to cite web sources, how to cite interviews, films, videos, and even recordings and music compositions. Um, you never know what you're going to need to cite or what you're going to be using for an assignment. So this guide has all of that compiled here for you. So back to the library website. 
again, if you have any questions navigating the library resources or getting your research started, you can ask us a question through the library chat here. When it loads, you can give us a call, which our number is listed here on the library website within the location. And you can also send us an email if you have any other questions. I believe that's gonna conclude our workshop today. If you attended today's workshop for extra credit, the code word is going to be library cats. Thank you for coming to today's workshop.